So welcome everybody to our, what is this, the fourth float conference webinar, or fifth, maybe, I don't know, whatever. Our next float conference webinar, it is today, July 22nd, and we're very excited to have our webinar about adding and maintaining multiple modalities at your float or wellness center. We have some, I think some folks that don't even have float here, so that will still be beneficial to them. Um, we have three speakers today for you. They're each going to give us a brief little talk about their area of expertise, and then we'll be, we will open it up for everybody to ask questions and have a discussion um, about wherever the questions lead us. So I will um, go ahead and introduce each speaker as they come on so that we can remember who they are when they give their little presentation. Um, if Does anybody have any questions so far or are we good to go? Looks, looks like we're good to go. Okay, so we're going to start with Luke Kruger, who owns and operates Mandala Float Center and Mandala, uh, oh man, manu manufacturing? He <laughs> manufactures float tanks and also- Sorry, not Mandala Float, float Center, oh. but there is actually a Mandala Float Center. Oh, um, no. my, oh. my, I have Deep Wellness Center. Deep Wellness Center yeah, and, and then Mandala we're... Float. Now we're okay. Deep Wellness Systems, the manufacturing. Oh, you are? I didn't know that. Well, congratulations. Yeah, just merged them. Yeah. Maybe thanks. maybe you should just give us an introduction of you and I'll just let you take over. Sorry, I didn't, didn't want to interrupt. I just didn't. That's there okay. is actually a Mandala Float Center and that's not mine. So I'm yeah. so sorry. Okay. Oh, no worries. You're... Welcome, Luke. <laughs> thanks. Hi, everybody. Hey, Um. so I and Jocelyn, do I have like five minutes to talk? I forget what the template was. Um, you have five to 10, give or take, whatever, okay, cool. whatever works for you. Yeah. So I don't have like a, a speech prepared or anything. Um, I figure there'll be a lot of questions. So I'd like to use some of my time for Q and A as well for you guys. Um, but so we're talking about contrast therapy, um, AKA fire and ice are the two most common ways to say it. Uh, basically a sauna and a cold plunge, right? And um, I added this to my center last spring. And um, because I, I just love it as a lifestyle, I built the sauna in our house here. I've got a portable sauna. I take up to the lake and chainsaw a hole in the ice in the winter or like take up to the nice warm lake in the summer. Um, so yeah, contrast therapy, there's a lot of uh, peer reviewed data and everything on, on the benefits of it. Um, well, I should specify, there's not a lot as far as contrast, um, as far as like hard science, there is for sauna, there is for cold plunge. And, um, but yeah, so we can talk about any of that stuff. Uh, but basically I just wanted to open it up for questions because I don't know where y'all are at. I do find it's a very popular thing right now, uh, much like floating was five years ago, as far as it just catching on, you know, I feel like floating has kind of made it to the next tier, much more established now where contrast is more budding. Um, despite being an ancient practice, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I just love it. And do you guys have any questions? Um, go ahead, Aaron. Hi, um, yeah, I'll ask, Aaron. um, what are you finding, uh, more popular? Are you thinking, um, plunge tubs or built-in plunge pools? So the plunge tubs are more popular just because of the ease of installation. Yep. And um, so the chilling is kind of the main technical requirement, and that's going to depend on your size of vessel. Um, so those are very elaborate down to very, you know, pretty simple. About the cheapest one you can get, though, is about a thousand bucks ish. The chiller is definitely the most expensive part. But the commercial ones, if you want to have a big pool, I mean, those go up to 20 plus thousand for just the chiller. Um, so but besides that, it's basically just a basin, right, of some kind. And um, unlike floating, where there's all these other things you need to worry about, um, there's no salt involved. One of the really cool things about it, you just drain it if you want to replace the water. You know, that was like a mind blower for me. Like, oh, I can just dump the water, <laughs> you know, um, instead of like dealing with chemistry and stuff. Um, so there's a little bit of chemistry involved, obviously. But and that was way above your question. But um, yeah. <laughs> And what temperature are you kind of looking at? Are you talking about the ice bars or just the cold plunge? Yeah, so the way I like to do contrast, I like to be about 45 degrees Fahrenheit and 185 to 200. 
yeah, um, there's a lot of ways to do it though. You know, um, I get a lot of questions about infrared saunas and uh, infrared can be done, I think, if you don't have as cold of water. So I was thinking about that, like maybe people want to offer something that's not so intense, um, you know, and that could be something, I don't know if the benefits would be as high or not. Uh, but generally we're talking about a hot sauna because when you get out of the cold water, it's, I'll have goosebumps for eight minutes in the sauna sometimes still, if I do a long cold plunge, uh, you know, at 200 degrees in the sauna. So, um, yeah. Hey, Luke, a quick question. Hey, this is Mark. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. As well. Hi. Um, Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> sorry, no video, but quick question. Um, do you like facilitate the fire and ice experience in some way? Like, is this a, a, an extra burden on your staff or do you just let the people go into a room and, and go back and forth on their own? Just the intro really. And I find the cleaning is a little easier. It depends how you set up the room, much like a float room. Um, but you know, there's no salt involved. Um, it, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not too much, honestly. It would be more if I didn't have a Wi-Fi heater. Uh, so I can turn on my, my sauna or set a timer from home. So if I have a 10 a.m. fire and ice, I'll set, set it before I go to bed. You know, um, but if, if you have to get there to turn it on, that would be a lot more labor because like our big sauna takes an hour and a half to heat up. So that would be something to consider. And have you done any kind of analysis like revenue per room? float versus the fire and ice, like which one produces more? So I am not a good person to ask those kind of questions because my float center is, is like an extension of our home. Um, we're closed half the week. We block off time if we want to go to the lake. You know, we don't treat it much as much of a business as long as it pays its own bills. So um, I honestly don't pay attention to that. But it's a very pop very popular room. And, um, I it's, it is less maintenance than a float room. I love floating. I'm so glad we have them, but man, I could definitely see doing a business of just fire and ice because it's really popular. Um, it's, it's not as hard to explain as floating. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's just, um, it, it's a great modality to have in my opinion. Hey, Luke, will you share um, a little bit about some tips about how to set up your room, especially if you have a float center thinking, um, soundproofing or location of the room. Cause that, that is one of those things that I've learned is a big deal that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily consider. And in the float world, we're so used to quiet, but fire and ice is different. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Which is another reason it would be nice to have a fire and ice only, uh, area of your building because, um, you, uh, Kim is on the fire and ice room uh, group on Facebook. Uh, I recommend everybody join that if you're interested. Uh, we're trying to get more activity on there as far as like tips for commercial operation and just enjoyment in general. But um, I bring that up because I had mentioned on there one time that, um, you know, if somebody doesn't know what's happening, walking down our hallway, you might think people are having sex in that room because people get in there and make all kinds of noises when they get in the cold water. Um, we got really lucky in our space. That room is wrapped in lead. It was an x-ray room. So uh, with proper soundproofing, there's there's somebody's head floating like three feet from the cold plunge. And I've had people yell profanities when they get in the cold water and the person didn't hear it. So it definitely can be done, you know. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a factor. And thanks for, for bringing that up. Plus the sauna as well. People tend to get chatty in there. I have another question for you. Um, when we think about floating, it's really easy for us, you know, we all get the old, I can do that at home in my bathtub. And for floating, it's really easy to come back to that. Um, have you faced similar sort of comments from people whenever they're thinking about cold plunge and how do you, how do you respond to those? Yeah, um, so cold showers can be great. Uh, you can get a lot of benefit from that. Um, so Huberman Lab, if you guys have heard of it or you wanna write, write that down, it's a great, composition of, of applicable scientific findings to increasing kind of biohacking, but he does a lot on contrast therapy and, um, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And he, he is laid out. There is more benefit to cold water immersion than a shower. Uh, they're the same as far as mental fortitude training, because 
I, I say this all the time. I would much rather get in the cold plunge than a cold shower because it's like you're getting in the whole time in the cold shower. It's like, it doesn't get easier. You know, it's peppering your nervous system. Whereas the cold water, you can get in and really get in the Zen of it. So um, can you do it at home? Kind of. Um, in the winter, you can, depending on where you live. Uh, you know, we're really lucky here to have clean water to swim in. But um, as far as, uh, uh, yeah, so water temperature is going to vary so much depending on where you live. It, here, uh, it's in the summer, it's not cold enough to, to just pour a bath um, and, and, and use it as a cold plunge in the summer. But in the winter, it definitely is. Um, another question that's pertinent is um, ice. Can I just buy bags of ice? The answer is no. <laughs> it takes so much ice. It's insane. It take, if you wanted to pour a bathtub uh, with, say, 60 degree water and, and add ice to get a cold plunge, you're talking about 120 pounds of, of ice, I think something like that. So um, really long answer to your question, but yeah, thanks. Perfect. Thank you. We did have a question in the chat. Um, Luke, it's from Mark, uh, the girlies again. Sorry, it's scrolling weird for me. Um, he was just wondering what the typical time frame is um, that the room is booked for one person in the fire and ice session. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Um, I had, we had started with 45 minute and 90, 45 was not enough time at all. Um, so we do an hour and 90 minutes now, and then we do longer based on request. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think if someone were to use it multiple times a week, um, an hour is, is enough. Um, but when people get in there, they just, you get out of the sauna, you want to be in the cold plunge, you get out of the cold plunge, you want to be in the sauna. And it's this beautiful cycle where you're getting all this cardiovascular exercise and you're just getting progressively more and more jelly. Like you come out of there and you're just glowing. You get the post float glow from it. So yeah, um, 60, 60 and 90 is what we usually sell at our place. Do you have a lot of people that book together, like multiple people in the room at a time? Yes. And, and yes. do you do the same length of time or longer? That is another wonderful thing about the room. Our sauna fits four. The, the cold plunge I make fits two people at a time. Usually the cold plunge is the limiting factor as far as processing people. Um, so that's a tremendous income potential is your room can have, you know, two to five people in it at a time. And we don't, we don't discount a whole lot for the second person. We do, but man, that, that room can turn out a lot of dollars per hour. Awesome. I think Kelly had a question. Um, yeah. So this is something I've been looking at adding to my center with some expansion. And um, we were looking at potentially doing like a, a wall with a pocket door that locks between the cold plunge and the sauna. And that way you have the option for contrast or just the sauna or just the cold plunge. So I see the value in just promoting it as contrast only. Um, I'm just wondering, do you get a lot of requests for, can I come in and only do the cold plunge um, or just the sauna, I guess? Yeah, thanks. Uh, that is a great point. If, if, uh, if built in a way to, okay, so one, one of the things with just cold plunge is you can't charge a lot for that, right? But you have to clean it. You have to clean the shower, you know, because you want people to shower before you, they get in there. Um, you don't have to, you know, um, but that's generally a factor. So, you know, you would probably have a shower for the cold plunge and for the shower or for the sauna. I mean, um, but also, yeah, just like, can you charge more than $15 for just the cold plunge? Maybe 20. I don't know. But you know, then you got to flip that room and it's unavailable. If, if you're on blocks, you know, it's like each person takes a block. Um, I have thought a lot about having a communal room where you can just come and go, but then your sauna's on all day. Um, you know, which, which is fine. Like big hotels do that stuff. There's just kind of a lot of logistics that happen with it where, um, we only had one nice room. Um, so we put them both in the same room and it's like, if you are doing just the cold plunge, that means I can't make money off contrast in that room. Um, so absolutely it can be done. And, and as a benefit, oh man, if you could have a membership for the cold plunge and people can come, you know, five times a week or whatever, that'd be fantastic. I just don't know how to set that up in the, the, 
way we've set our business up. We're more like private yeah. room rental. You know? Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's a difficult thing to figure out because I've got a really solid sauna client base. And so a lot of them are probably not going to want to move over and do something different. So it's either like get two saunas and one with a cold plunge or, you know, so I got to figure out what's going to work, but that's very helpful. So thank you. Yeah. Good question. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on. And we'll, when we have questions later on, I'm sure we can answer more questions about fire and ice as needed. So I'm going to mute you, Luke. So thanks. feel free to wave at me if you need me to unmute you. Um, so uh, thanks for all your questions, everybody. This I feel like we got a lot of back and forth going. I think we're, we're doing well here. Um, so next up, we have Aaron Lee, um, who has um, a stacked bio, Aaron. Very impressed. I didn't know all this about you when you sent this over to me. So Aaron is actually a qualified civil engineer with over 20 years experience in the construction industry with the past 12 years, um, exclusively designing project management and constructing a wide variety of exclusive high-end high-end commercial and residential heat experience rooms. Um, she's also the executive director of the World Halo Therapy Association um, and in like seven other groups, <laughs> the GWI Initiative Exploring Salt and Halo Therapy, the founder of the UK Halo Therapy Network, and also runs a small salt room business um, in addition to helping other people run their salt rooms. So Aaron's going to obviously talk to us about Halo Therapy today, um, and we're excited to hear from you. Thank you. Well, I think I said earlier, it's boring if you're not busy. So <laughs> um, I'm going to attempt to share my screen. So let's give this a whirl. Um, hopefully you can see that. Does that, uh, oh, I'll take myself off of there. There we go. Can you see that? Okay, great. So Halo therapy, why it's great for your clients and even better for your business. So that's what I want to run through with you today. Um, but Halo therapy, just to start with, it's become a bit of a passion of mine from personal experience. Um, it was never something I set out to do. It found me and uh, here we are. So... So what is it? Um, a lot of you have probably already heard what halotherapy is, um, but for those of you that don't, it is no, also known as dry salt therapy. It originated from um, Poland. They discovered that the uh, men working in the salt mines didn't seem to suffer from the same respiratory conditions as the general public. Um, and there was a um, Polish doctor called Felix who, who noticed this and he did a bit of further investigation and then even started to um, prescribe his patients to go down into the salt caves for therapeutic reasons. Um, they had wonderful results and uh, it's been in the last 20 years that it's been um, modernized and now we have what's called the halo generator and what that does is that grinds up pharmaceutical grade salt into tiny little microparticles that are then dispersed into generally a calming and relaxing environment um, it is holistic and drug-free and natural so it is considered a holistic therapy too um, so how does it help i'll just run through some of the benefits of halo therapy um, so with over 8% of the US population suffering from asthma, um, halotherapy can really help with this. Um, again, asthma is also one of, the, um, one of the top five most costly health conditions. So being able to um, help treat it with uh, halotherapy can only be a bonus. And the halotherapy helps uh, with inflammation. So it reduces the inflammation in the airways, it helps to thin the mucus, and it also helps to kill off bacteria. Um, halotherapy is also great for COPD, much in the same ways. And with COPD uh, being the second most common lung disease in the world, and it's also pipped to, be, um, to become the leading cause of death over the next 15 years, if we're able to do something to help um, you know, reduce the symptoms, then that's got to be really, really positive. So again, reducing the inflammation, widening the airways, helping to be able to breathe and helping to expel the sputum and the mucus that's stuck in the lungs. 
Um, allergies, over 60 million Americans suffer from pollen allergies each year. So that is a huge number of people. Um, I myself have suffered from allergies and have used Taylor therapy um, to assist with that. It acts as a natural antihistamine. So if you can target it at the right time of year, um, often leading up to allergy season and then throughout it, you can really reduce the symptoms of um, hay fever and the like. Eczema, um, I was one of those one in five children who developed eczema as a child. Um, there is a story um, that I've released recently about my experience as a child with asthma. Um, it's not something that I like to see any child go through and is one of the reasons that I'm very passionate about halotherapy. Um, it can really, really help reduce the inflammation, help with the itching, um, and really bring the skin back to um, the right levels of pH and then bring the moisture back and soften it again. Um, sleep, I think we could all do with a little bit more sleep and with it, insomnia affecting one in four Americans and one in five suffering from sleep apnea, um, halotherapy could really be a benefit to those. Um, so with halotherapy, it can really help relax the airways, um, and it also, uh, much like a waterfall or a thunderstorm or being at the seaside, produces tons of negative ions. And what these negative ions do is they actually help combat all the positive ions that we come into contact with through electromagnetic radiation from laptops, iPads, iPhones, etc. And it helps bring us back into a much more neutral state. And it's quite funny, like I talk to my clients before they've even had a halotherapy session. I say, oh, yeah, most people fall asleep. And they're like, no, 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 I'm not going to fall asleep in there. Well, I speak to them at the end and they're like, oh, I dozed off and it was just lovely. So, um, yeah, it's very interesting to just see how it can reduce um, or bring you down into that nice calming state. Um, and on that, it's also brilliant for stress and anxiety. Um, I've also noticed that, that in children, um, children with ADHD and um, ASD, it can really help them. So I'll see children going in there, you know, quite highly strung and, you know, wound up. And you know, after half an hour session, they do come out feeling a lot more relaxed. So um, it's a lovely, calming, relaxing environment for them as well. So there are so many potential benefits. Um, I've just gone through a few with you. Um, and this is why it's such a wonderful thing that it can really improve so many different conditions. Um, but not only that, why is it such a good option for you as a business? Well, again, it is a touchless therapy, so you don't need any additional stuff. Um, the running costs are actually very, very low. Um, the amount of salt that's actually used in a halotherapy session is very minimal. It's probably about half a teaspoon. So you're looking at about 10 cents. Um, and it also uses very minimal electricity because most halo generators will plug into a normal electric socket. Super easy to install. You've not got any drainage issues to worry about. Um, as I mentioned, plugs into a standard um, electric point. And if you go with a small cabin, which one of the prefabricated cabins, you don't need any specific ventilation. If you are going to go with a large room, then we do need to consider some HVAC design. Um, it's very easy to maintain. Um, for my room, I basically suck it out with a um, vacuum cleaner once a day and give it a bit of a dust down um, and then wipe down any touch points. That's super easy. And then sessions can be as short as 20 minutes in the cabins or up to an hour in a large room. So you're gonna to want to crunch the numbers. Um, so hopefully we're gonna help you with that. Um, over on the World Halo Therapy Association website, we've created a free profitability projection calculator. So that will help you um, work out just how much you could potentially make from a halo therapy room. But in order to do that, you're going to need to know some numbers. Um, and I'm guessing that was probably going to be some of your questions is how much is it going to cost? Well, prefabricated cabins and booths with halo generators can start anywhere from about $8,000. Um, there are a few different ones on the market. So do obviously have a look around. 
Um, you can also get combination cabins. So this is what we would call therapy layering. Um, you can get infrared with your halo therapy and also red light. Those two things have become very, very popular um, over the past year or so um, and have a host of benefits that come with those. Um, so those can range from 10 to $30,000. Um, and also with the red lights, you can almost start moving over into the beauty side of things and reach a much wider audience. Um, same with the infrared, you can start bringing in people who are maybe suffering from arthritis or want to help with their um, sports performance or muscle recovery. Um, and then you've also got the other option of designing your own room, um, which can be as basic or as elaborate as you like, really. Um, you will need a halo generator, of course, to provide full um, proper halo therapy. There are rooms out there that just have salt bricks on the walls. That's not halo therapy. Um, so don't be fooled. Uh, you'll need a correct ventilation system. Um, you'll need to allow for some lounges or chairs. Again, you can go for whatever level you want. You could have the zero gravity chairs, which are probably around about $50 a chair, or you could go right up to the heated salt brick lounges. Um, again, you could add in salt walls and lamps just to create a lovely ambiance in the room, beautiful for lighting. And you could also choose to add salt to a floor. So here's a few examples of just some cabins from or rooms from around the globe, give you a little bit of inspiration. Um, here's some more elaborate ones with um, lots of salt bricks and heated lounges. And you can also get the prefabricated cabins. Now, halotherapy is not just for humans, it's for animals too. They have lungs and can also benefit from um, halotherapy. Um, you can find out um, more about that over on the WHA website. We also did a few uh, recordings and interviews at our symposium last year um, with Dr. Marlene Siegel and a bit on equine as well. Um, so where can you find out more? Well, head over to the WHA website or you could come and join us for free at our annual symposium on the 29th and 30th of November. Um, and you can also head over to the Global Wellness Institute, which has also got a lot of research and information. Um, you could also decide to join us if you do go down the route of a salt room. Um, we've got loads of information in there and a variety of different memberships. We can help support you all the way through from planning your salt room and then providing you with marketing information and the like as well. Uh, we also run a Halopreneur program. Um, we'll teach you everything you need to know about salt um, and all its benefits. So thank you for joining me and letting me share a little bit about um, halotherapy, my special little passion. Um, and yeah, happy to answer any questions now or at the end, whatever works for you, Jocelyn. Yeah, I think in the interest of time, let's go ahead and um, let Kelly do her little talk real quick and then... Um, if everybody, if you have questions and you don't think you'll remember them, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll circle back around to them because I know I would totally forget them, but <laughs> I'll go ahead and introduce Kelly and let her speak for a few minutes, about five to 10 minutes, and then we will dive back into questions after that. So, uh, but thank you so much, Erin. That was very comprehensive. I think you answered any question I would have come up with. So uh, I really appreciate all of, all of um, everything that you put together for that. Um, so yeah, don't forget to drop your questions in the chat. And okay, so next up we have Kelly Caldwell, who also has 7 million hats on her head. Um, Kelly owns and operates Drift Float and Spa, um, which was opened in 2017. She also um, has a bachelor's in advertising. So she specializes in uh, creative aspects of art direction and copywriting. She is also a US distributor of float spa pods and rooms. And she also consults for float centers and spas across the country on systems, uh, efficiency, staff management training, business development, and technical main maintenance and branding. And then in addition to all of that, Kelly has lots of different services at her float spa specifically. And so she's going to speak to us a little bit about which services she has and which why she choose the, chose each of those and et cetera. So thanks, Kelly. Awesome. Thank you. Um... So yes, I have quite a few services. So we have our three float tanks. 
Um, and then we have infrared sauna, massage, Lucia light, and an oxygen bar. And then recently I've added CRM um, therapy, which is the complete resource model. Um, it is a mental health counseling done by a licensed therapist. Um, so we have kind of packed our space full of options um, with the therapy being kind of a not part of your like typical spa day. Uh, we do have an all-inclusive package. Um, I've called it a call me an Uber package and because uh, you don't want to drive after. Um, but typically, as far as the order goes, people will do an infrared sauna, then a float, then massage, Lucia light, oxygen bar to kind of have some downtime to, to wrap it all together. Um, my main approach with doing all of these was to offer, you know, very highly effective tools and services for healing uh, that weren't readily available in my area. And I have memberships for most of them um, and they all kind of benefit each other. So depending on the person's goals, if they're looking to enhance their creativity, they may be interested in doing the Lucia light and a float. Whereas, you know, the athlete may be coming in for an infrared sauna float and massage, um, with the float kind of being our, you know, as we all know, the kind of central bread and butter kind of ingredient that is healing on all the aspects, uh, for a person. So, um, because I have so many services, uh, I kind of feel similarly to how Luke did his, I'd rather kind of take questions based on what people are most interested in knowing about. Sure. That sounds great. Um, awesome. I, I love that you were mentioning about like bundling those services together. Like for some reason yeah. I didn't even process that you would be doing that, that, but that makes perfect sense. So yeah, does anybody have any questions outright? Oh, we've got one in the chat. We can start there. Um, uh, Cynthia is wondering what the size of your center is. Um, and I so, think maybe wondering how much space is allotted to yeah. each of those. So we have sort of a weird setup. It's 2,400 square feet. Uh, it's a little bit more. It's like 2,441, I think specifically. Um, but it's an L shape. So um, I can actually probably show you a layout because I've been working on taking the space next to me. Um, so you'll see kind of where I'm headed from here as well. Uh, but I would be happy to kind of show where we're at currently. And um, let me see, share my screen here. Oh, goodness. Um, just share my whole desktop. Well, it's not wanting to let me do, do that right you, um, now. Can so. you send me an image and I can show it in a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. OK. And uh, maybe maybe Mark can ask his question while you're looking for that, if that's OK. Sure. sure. Um, I was just wondering with so many modalities, if you were opening a, a new center, um, would you go with having multiple modalities again, or would you focus on one or two? Like, what would you trim down, or would you just replicate what you have now? Um, I would, at minimum, replicate what I have now, if not add more services. So when I expand, um, I, I just up uploaded that PDF to the chat. So um, you can see kind of what we're going towards with this as well. We'd be adding two more massage rooms. Currently I only have one. Um, and then I'd be moving my sauna to the, to the new space, adding in a cold plunge with that, um, with a yoga room um, where we would run yoga services probably three times a day, five days a week. Um, and then that would also be a general space for a bunch of other services. So I'm looking at going to the biohacking conference in September, um, just kind of trying to pull, you know, within that realm of highly effective, little known, um, not readily available tools for healing. Um, that's kind of what, what I'd like to see. 
Um, and so I, I would add more. There we go. Here's the, so our, the, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you're fine. So this is our, our current, like, getting a bid on uh, plan. So currently, where you see the massage, the two massage rooms, the retail, um, uh, all of this section going back to that multi-purpose room is not our current space. So that L shape where the lobby starts, the bathrooms, utility room, all of that going back towards that lounge is our current space. Um, and where that break room is, is our current sauna room. Um, so this is kind of how I'm looking to transition it. Um, previously, we <laughs> I had gone kind of crazy and done two saunas, two cold plunges, three massage rooms. Like I had a whole bunch built into this new space and it was going to be great, but the build out was also going to be half a million dollars. So um, we needed to kind of switch it up <laughs> and see what we could do with that space because it's still advantageous for us to take it on uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, but I've also pushed our current space to the brink. And I will say having multiple modalities, having as many services as we have keeps us extremely full, extremely busy. I'm booking people for massage right now out until the end of August, early September. Um, and floats fill up because of that as well, because people like to pair them together. Um, the one thing I would note on that is when you're scheduling clients, if you add on massage, I would highly recommend um, recommending to them to do their massage after their float. Um, you can't really mess it up, but getting excess oil into your tank after a massage, um, you know, not not ideal. I mean, obviously we have ways of getting rid of that, but it just creates more maintenance over time. Um, so yeah. Awesome. It looks like Luke has a question. Sure. Um, Luke, I've got you on mute still. I think you'll have to unmute yourself though. There, there we go. go. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this could be like a whole seminar of a question, but my, my difficulty, cause we have, uh, five different services, um, and I've got it at a good place now. Um, but as far as membership that covers all of the services, is that something you do? If so, how do you reconcile if it's like, you know, I don't know, 75 bucks a month or whatever. And they do say just a sauna, like, does that take a chunk amount of their dollar amount credit that they get more dollars than they pay? Like, how do you, how do you reconcile all that? Yeah. Yeah. No, great question. Um, so the way that I've done it is because I center everything around the float um, because that's really the heart of, of what we do. Um, I have centered everything around our float membership. So I have an unlimited sauna membership where people can come use our infrared sauna. It's 175 a month. Um, and they can come every day that we're open, which we're open six days a week. Um, so that's a great price point. Our float membership, let's say for the hour float membership, uh, it's $60 a month. They get a float every month. They get discounted rates on additional floats. At a certain point, it becomes unlimited. Um, and then they also get 10% off all of our other services, retail, and any other membership. So, you know, if they fall in love with the sauna, if they fall in love with the Lucia Light and they're a float member, they can add on those other memberships and get an additional 10% off that discounted membership rate for the other services. So that's kind of, you know, it can be a little confusing in the way you explain it. Um, however, it kind of encompasses everything without having like one overarching membership for the whole space. I had never thought of that. That's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And then, you know, that also lends itself outside of the memberships. But one thing I wanted to mention that we do that I think is a little different than other centers is when it comes to specials, um, I run two discounted specials a year. I do one fifty percent off sale for one day only on all service credits. And then I do one like kind of gift card weekend um, like, you know, that staggered gift card 
if you buy two, you get this much off kind of thing um, over Black Friday weekend. Um, and then all my other specials are upgrades. So it's like, you know, we might do a specific spring conditioning special for athletes where they get an infrared sauna, a float, and then like all these best bells and whistles on their massage that don't cost us a whole lot of extra, but it's an upgraded price point too. So I'm not discounting any services to run these specials. I'm actually increasing my price and it draws people in um, just because it's limited time. It's something that is really appealing. Like around Valentine's Day, we did a box of locally made truffles with um, a chocolate strawberry mud wrap. You know, like it's it just opens the door to a lot of marketing endeavors. So we have a couple <laughs> questions in the float in the float. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in the chat. Somebody, needs a float. <laughs> Somebody does need a float. Um, so I've got one more question specifically for Kelly. And then I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to ask everybody questions. And I also have um, some of our float conference sponsors here that um, help with other that specialize in other modalities. I want to give them each like about a minute to tell us about their modalities specifically. So Dan, I see your question and we will get to it. Um, but first, uh, Cynthia is wondering if um, you have a best, I'm wondering, I'm going to change your question a little bit, Cynthia. Do you have a favorite combination and order of your modalities at your center? Yes. Um, so if I, the ideal day for me is a 30 minute, so going off of our like, call me an Uber package, because I do it for two as well, where there's um, a combination for two people to do a spa day like that. But um, basically what we do is a Lucia light for 30 minutes. It's a really wow factor kind of um, uh, service. Um, and it kind of gets you relaxed and ready for the day. I also find that if you do that after the sauna, if you're overheated going into a light session, it's not great. So starting with the Lucia light, then going into a, a sauna and then going into your float. So you get all that sweat off of you with the shower um, and then shower after going into a massage after that. And then wrapping everything up with the oxygen bar at the end is super nice because it's just very chill you're just sitting there breathing and it allows you to integrate your whole day and kind of come back into your body before you leave the space um but that's also you know the whole call me an uber concept so yeah is that really what you call it yes yeah <laughs> I love hopefully that. they don't sue me but hopefully uh, not and maybe, maybe I, you could call me a car ride <laughs> <laughs> yeah awesome okay so let's give um and I think JJ left, but if anybody hears from Thor, please let me know. But um, I think Raphael can answer Dan's question. Raphael is with Roxia, which is another light therapy um, e equipment, I think. Um, so I don't know if you have a minute to tell us about light therapy, Raphael, um, but floor is yours. One minute. All right, thank you. And um, I am a lover of the Lucia. It's what brought me into the industry. And so, uh, kudos to anybody that was a first mover on that. Um, it's a wonderful technology. Uh, there are a lot more new lights out there now at much better price points that have a lot more capabilities uh, since that time. So um, people love it. It's, uh, it can be anything from a deep trance situation to a healing situation, although you know we don't make promises, uh, to psychedelic and out-of-body experiences. And, you know, I just encourage my float center clients to price it in a way that, you know, they're not, they're not taking away from the profitability of their center, you know, spending time with somebody on one service where they could be making more money somewhere else. So, you know, where your profit point is, uh, but it is, it's an unbelievable wow factor, uh, especially uh, with the right session for the right person. It's the type of thing that, you know, you combine float with the uh, Roxiva or the Lucia, and people just go out and brag about what they just did, the, you know, on social media, on, um, you know, in, in, in friend groups, whatever. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing any of you that are going to be at the show. Uh, I am exhibiting there. So uh, thank you for the time, Jocelyn. 
Of course. Thank you. Um, anybody have questions about light? And I'm driving, before? so oh. that's why I'm not visible. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Kim dropped your website in the in the uh, chat, so if anybody wants to learn more about that, they can go on there. Uh, I wanted to. Oh, note thank something. you. Thank you. I wanted to note something real quick. Um, I'm really excited about trying the Rock Siva. I'm glad you're going to be there at the float conference because um, I've heard great things. Um, but one thing people need to know before adding a Lucia light or Rock Siva or whichever one you choose, um, we do at our center require that we have uh, an employee running that um, that's been trained on it because they're are complications with um, uh, seizures and, and that sort of thing. Um, so if you are looking at adding it, make sure that you're accounting for prof proper staffing for that. Nice. Yes, Thanks. absolutely, sure. perfect. <laughs> okay, we also have Dr. Brandon here with Theta Acoustics, um, who does uh, the vibration chairs. So we'll let, we'll let him do got a quick one to two minutes to tell us about your service product. Nope, you're still on mute. How about there? there? Okay. Um, Luke, I had to crack up when you talked about, well, not crack, but I really appreciate that you have a hot sauna. Um, I did a 20 minute uh, cold plunge in 34 degree water, and they only had a very light uh, infrared sauna for me. And I was quite miserable for about 30 minutes. Um, anyway, so um, my name is Dr. Brandon DeWeese and I, uh, I have Theta Acoustics. Uh, it was Theta Wellness Group. This will be my fourth time at the float conference. And what we do is we use light, sound and vibration. And the light is not so much a light therapy. It is in, it's an isochronic tone of the binaural beats that you're listening to so that you get the light, the, uh, the sound and the vibration of a neurological beat pattern that will drop you into theta within seven minutes. Now, the benefit of that is we have a, we use about 800 different guided visualizations for everything to quit smoking, losing weight, to opening your heart to abundance, to PTSD, to being a better golfer, to, for children to, um, to feel comfortable around studying. And what I've done at the last float conference was I did a session for the pre-float. And this year I'm actually doing a session that not only takes you down into theta, because normally you want at the, at the event, I like to bring people back up to a high alpha, low beta, but I also going to add something for folks with float centers. And that is something that will take somebody to theta in seven minutes. So you can put somebody in the chair that's on their first float for seven to 10 minutes and then put them in the chamber and they're already in that theta mindset because I spoke to so many people that said, well, my, you know, my wife told me to go float because I was stressed and I got in and I, I got in a float and I, they closed the doors behind me and I couldn't shut my mind off. And that started making me think like, after I heard that from some people, I went, I really need to join this group because this, this is something that we work really well together on. Um, the other thing is, is with the, the vibration being in sync or the, the sound signal creates the vibration through uh, transducers. With it being in sync, if somebody is working on, let's just say a PTSD issue or a stop smoking or coping with grief, um, because it's vibrated through light vib uh, tactile vibration, when it hits the brain stem, it gets stored into the subconscious and doesn't go up into the motor area. And what we're going to be doing at this event is I'm going to be, uh, I'm bringing an, a heart rate variability specialist. And we're going to be doing, when I say this event, this conference coming up in Maine, uh, we're going to be bringing a, I have a heart rate variability specialist and people will do a four minute pre and then a four minute post uh, uh, a 10 minute session on the vibration lounger. And we're going to get to see what it's doing to your stress levels. What's your biological age versus your chronological age? What, um, uh, what, 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 what's specifically going on? And you know, are you spiking stress, uh, uh, stress signals, or you know, what brainwave patterns are you dominant in? And we can get, get a whole lot of information in a short period of time. And I, I just love having the ability to uh, use a modality such as HRV 
because people will come up and they'll say, I feel really good. I feel different. And then they see it on the screen. And now you can use that as a way to um, create a package for your people. Like, yeah, we saw how much stress you were in. Now you're in not, not nearly as much stress. Um, let's, you know, now, now let's create a package based on that. So um, um, again, it's, it's vibration, uh, but so much more with it when you utilize the, the guided visualizations. And there's music only pieces for people that, just don't want to listen to anybody and um uh the chair is also grounded so that you're bringing up negative electrons into the person and they're totally uh, they're earthing while they're on the chair um i know that was more than two minutes i yeah. that was as quick as i could possibly go uh, i'm open to any questions and i hope to see you all at the conference you know dr brandon we are doing a poster session at this year's conference if you have data that you want to put together onto a poster and throw that up on the wall with some of the other um, posters. I would I would be happy to talk about that. Oh, um, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah, trying like to that. trying to get a little more scientific um, uh, outside of the stage. So, um, I have one more person that we're going to give a few minutes um, to tell us about their uh, specialty. Um, Christy Jones is here with Thor, so we'll give her a one to two minutes, and then we can open back up to questions. And I know we're running short on time, so sorry sorry about that, everybody. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Okay, great. I'm on my phone here. Um, so I'm Christy Jones. We're with Thor Photo Medicine. We do uh, red light therapy using LED and laser. Um, we will be at the float conference in August. I'm so stoked about that. Um, and we're bringing our Nova Thor, which is our whole body red light therapy pod. And that uses red and near infrared light. Uh, we have a FD a indication that's been cleared for the minor relief of muscle and joint pain and stiffness, um, minor arthritis pain, muscle spasms, and a temporary increase in local blood circulation and temporary relaxation of the muscle. Um, with over 8,000 academic papers in total, 800 clinical trials, um, there's no question about whether or not photobiomodulation, which is what this therapy is called, uh, works. Uh, we know that it works. Um, it's being used off-label um, for a lot of other exciting indications. We just finished a huge study on fibromyalgia that was um, had really promising and encouraging results. So that is what we do. Um, we have a big market in the professional sports industry, um, NFA or sorry, NFL and NBA teams, et cetera. Um, U.S. military, active military bases using this bed um, just to get their, their guys up and running. There's a huge aspect of um, increased recovery time for athletes because of the increase in blood flow and we're decreasing inflammation just because of the way that the uh, photobiomodulation science works with the body. So hope to see you all at the um, conference in a couple of weeks here. Feel free and come by and use the bed and see what you think. And thanks for having us today. Thanks so much, Christine. Um, okay, so we have no minutes left, but if you guys want to stay on, uh, I don't have anything scheduled next. Um, so if you want to keep chatting and asking questions, that's cool with me. Um, but if you have to go on to the next thing today, I also totally understand. Um, looks like we've got a couple questions uh, or comments in our chat. Um, so give me a, a nod or a no if you guys are willing to stay. Um I just want to say real quick, uh, if anybody has any follow-up questions, you're, you're welcome to uh, get a hold of me somehow. Is the, is, is our, was our information shared on the invite or anything like that? It wasn't, no. but I can if you guys are willing to share that information. I'll just type my email in here real quick, and um, I got to get going. But uh, yeah, okay. thanks, everybody. Have a great day. You it too, looks thanks. Like Kim has a question. Yes. Um, for Erin, um, going back to halo therapy, Erin, um, would you mind talking to us a little bit about the difference between um, kind of the environments that are available? You touched on it a little bit in your presentation, but, um, you know, some places that it's a, a very common question in the halo therapy world of, do you need loose salt on the floor? Do you not need that? Is there a benefit to doing it? Um, you know, talk a little bit about like what that environment looks like. Yeah, of course. Um, so a salt room can pretty, pretty much anything you want. Um, the main thing that you obviously have to have to call it halotherapy is the halo generator. 
Um, you can see that I have got some salt bricks here. <laughs> I love them. They look beautiful, but they don't really add much benefit to the room itself. Um, I do believe um, that seeing is believing, though. Um, so when someone is in a salt room, if they can see salt, um, they kind of believe something is happening because you can't actually see the salt that's coming out when you're doing the halo therapy because it's so tiny. Um, what does happen with um, Himalayan salt bricks is that they are um, EMF blocking, however, and they do help, um, you know, the environment itself, but it's, it's not a, it, it's not going to help any kind of health conditions. Um, by having it on the floor, um, you know, that's again is total preference. Personally, I hate having it on the floor because it's just another thing you have to keep clean and worry about going somewhere and, you know, all that. Um, I much prefer to just have like a, a either a, like a vinyl or a wooden floor, which you can just vacuum up at the end of the day. Um, but some people absolutely love it because it's a very tactile um you know, feeling to be able to play with the salt and things like that. Um, or maybe you might have like a kiddies room that, you know, they can go and play in it and it's a, it's a very sensory um, thing. So does that answer the question? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, across the industry too, there's also talk that um, having the salt on the floor can help to reduce the humidity in the space itself. And if you have a float center and you have a salt cave or salt room, Humidity is a major issue on the flight, float side. So having that loose salt, if you have float, can be very beneficial. Um, and it is, you know, I, I will agree. Basically, you're pumping salt into the room and whatever doesn't actually get inhaled um, or go away with people on their skin or their clothing does end up in every nook and cranny and all of that loose salt. So you do have to have a little uh, a kind of a plan of, every once in a while, how to desalt your salt space. Um, and it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And having, you know, if you are going to go down the route of having a specific, um, you know, a bigger salt room, then definitely consider your HVAC system and make sure you do it right. Um, yes. Otherwise you get into trouble there. Um, but yeah, salt does act like a, a big sponge. Mm -hmm. We've got a question in the chat I want to address, um, and I actually, I don't know, but maybe Kelly or Kim can answer um, if there's any certifications that you would need for all the different modalities. I know there's not anything for float um, that I'm aware of, but any others, are there any other, you mentioned training for the light therapy for sure. Yeah, but that's, that's internal training. Um, and there's recommendations by the manufacturers. I'm sure there are with the other manufacturers. Um, and then we also do, we have our employees do a seizure training. So if it does come up, because we have had, we've only had one in five years, I've had it for five years. Um, and it was just this last year, I think it's because people are more sensitive. Um, and it was sort of a one off event, and they had never had one before. So very much important that people um, know what to do in those instances otherwise it's extremely scary for them as well so yeah Definitely. and obviously cpr training is important and um, mm -hmm. all of that can i stuff. can i add to that very yeah. quickly so um one of the things that i coach all my clients with is they have an off switch built right onto their body it's called their hand and if they ever start to feel the tiniest bit strange they should just cover their eyes immediately and i always tell them that and um, I had a person um, prevent a seizure just by doing that. They didn't know that they had seizures, but they started to feel a little funny and they covered their eyes and they said, you know, turn off the light. And I did. And, you know, it, it just it's 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 scary. I mean, it has never happened to me, but it is definitely scary. Uh, it's supposedly one in three thousand um, that have some sort of sensitivity. Um, but, you know, we have a in-depth questionnaire that we utilize and a waiver, so. Great, thank you. Does anybody um, else have any other questions before? Oh, go ahead, well, Kim. Really quickly on the um, halo therapy, there isn't necessarily a certification that is required. However, there are some programs that are out there um, that are recommended. Erin, um, has the World Halo Therapy Association launched that officially? 
Yeah, well, so we've got the Halo, uh, sorry, the Halo Printer program, mm -hmm. um, and that's really great. It's a very interactive one. We have um, a nice supportive network on there, um, and you basically work through, um, I think we've got 18, 19 guides on there. So we take you all through the history of salt, how it came about, um, everything that you need to know, all the different conditions, various research papers, um, and then also give you help um, marketing. So, yep. Yeah. All there for you as well. Thanks. Thank. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions before we uh, close out here today, guys? Okay. Well, as a reminder, if you are not aware, I don't know why how you could not be aware, but the float conference is coming up on August twenty sixth to twenty eighth in Portland, Maine. Uh, the original Portland, they like to say. Um, we're very, very excited to see some of you there and some of you virtually as well. Um, and that's it. We're hoping to have one more webinar. Um, or no, we're not. We're going to do a little pre-session for the float conference to help everybody get used to the um, event platform that we have going on. So please let us know if you have any questions. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you Thank all you. soon. Bye. Thanks so much, Erin. Thank you. Bye, everybody.